but I wanted her to grow in moral stature. And it was because I'm interested. What what is heroism? You know, is it is it the general? Is it the, is it or is it the during World War II? Is it the legal secretary? Is it the truck driver from Chicago? Um, is you know all who became soldiers? And those are the real heroes. I wanted to do <coughs> as, as we saw in the aftermath of the World Trade Center. It's ordinary people performing extraordinary acts. Absolutely. So, uh, <coughs> had you read much? Um, see, I'm I'm an, an addict of of what I used to call romantic suspense. Mm -hmm. People like Mary Stewart, but more than that, nobody ever has heard today. It seems to me of Martha Albrand, who used to write absolutely wonderful books, very much like like Shining Through. Oh, I have never read her, you but, hadn't. I, but now I will. Well, I might have one or two <coughs> of these <laughs> yellow paperbacks I could loan you because she's been out of print forever. But she um, wrote, oh, gosh, Susan, it must be a dozen, maybe 20 mm -hmm. books. Uh, and they were almost always about a woman um, in some kind of um, dangerous situation, wartime mm -hmm. or just post early Cold War or something. Um, and an ordinary person, you know, not not mm -hmm. a um, modesty blazer, yeah. James Bond and drag or whatever mm -hmm. it was, right. but you know, who um, who wound up on the run or whatever it mm -hmm. is. I think Alan First today is writing a little bit mm -hmm. uh, along those lines. I was very taken with Kingdom of Shadows, where mm -hmm. his uh, Hungarian character in Paris, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't really want to see what's happening around him, you mm -hmm. know, and then. His uncle asked him to do something, and mm -hmm. suddenly, yeah. And he's he's not a totally ordinary person. He's a Hungarian count, you know, right. a big buck. So <laughs> let's be real here. But at the same time, you know, he's not he's not um, an Errol Flynn sort mm -hmm. of kind of guy, you know. And yet, there he goes. The the other reason that I wanted to write Linda is that um, Linda Voss of Shining right. Through is that it seemed to me that after an entire revolution of women in women's rights. Right. Um, we were getting to the point in, in the 70s with a lot of fiction that women were going through a huge thrash um, with dastardly husbands um, only to wind up, you know, their resolution was to go out and have an affair. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was still very much about men. And then as the 80s went into you know, began, it was very much, w women began to be victims again. Women died at the end, women did this, women did that. And I, I miss that kind of heroism mm -hmm. of, of strong women. I mean, the, you know, we have a whole history of it in this country uh, from Willa Cather on. And, and certainly, but where were the Jane Eyres? And I, I really wanted to have, um, a strong heroic figure. I, I wasn't interested in in writing about and in 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 my whodunits and my non whodunits. I'm I'm not interested in writing women. Yes, they they get they they a lot of the women have tough times, et cetera, et cetera. But they're capable of picking themselves up, dusting ourselves off, themselves off, and and going out there. Just as I mean, we don't come from. In, in America, we don't come from a line of, of weak people. I mean, just take what it, what it took to get out of Europe mm -hmm. and, and Asia, whether they came out or whether it was the Mayflower or 747. I mean, we're, we come from sturdy stock. And even, even those who, who didn't come willingly, I mean, just to have survived the voyage to have survived slavery and, and, and to thrive and prosper. So I was, I was interested in writing more about the stuff we're made of. And you did a, a wonderful job. And she she's, she's, you know, seems like this kind of ordinary, quiet girl when it starts. Yeah. And then, you know, um, I, I loved, I mean, it's, it, what would you call it? It's sort of a spy story in a way, if, yeah, if you want to look is. at the plot. It is. Sure. Um, is it your only period piece in the sense that it's back? No, because both in Almost Paradise and Red, White, and Blue, I go back right. several, it, it, although much of it takes place in modern times, what I'm interested in 
is how our history, not only our you know national local history, but our family history, um, the the stuff we know and the stuff we don't know, you know, affects us and creates us. Well, past is prologue, yeah. Yeah. and and, and, and that's, that's. But shining it. through, I thought, it, doesn't the whole thing take place? The whole thing takes place. So that place. was the one. It seemed to me mm -hmm. that didn't have a modern, right. Right. you know, exactly. a modern voice. Right. And yet you did that period, you know, just flawlessly. I can't remember. I mean, how could I tell? I was like four, but <laughs> um, but I, I I know my mom who does remember it mm -hmm. is a is a huge fan of your work and has always said that you know how how real it was to her. I mean, she didn't find any false notes um, in it, you know, in terms of, of how you wrote about a different time. Well, you know, when, when you do research, you, first of all, it should never show. I mean, if the reader can see the thumbtacks, you know, f that you've put up with your index cards, then you failed. But beyond that, it's, it's not just to get the facts right. I mean, you know, a copy editor can tell me when the Battle of, of Britain took place. But what I want is to immerse myself in that period. So for the 40s, say, I, I was reading women's magazines. I was reading papers. I was reading books written then. So, so that the voice becomes natural. You bet. And also, you don't give her contemporary attitudes. I mean, I think what yeah. I liked about her was that she was a person of her time mm -hmm. who rose to an occasion. She that's wasn't right. like a woman in the 90s dropping mm -hmm. back. Yeah. And I mean, that's such a problem with people who write books, you know, that are not, if they take the attitudes of today mm -hmm. back into the past, right. they're always false. Yeah. So yeah, I've, I've, right. I've always kind of hoped you'd do another book along those lines, but maybe, you know, maybe it's your thing to just do different books and yeah, you've I said mean, it I'm, and then you're done and. And that's it. And then I move on. but. The only time I've gone back was was with this new one, right? And that was really an accident. Ah, well, okay. Um, let's oh. uh, <laughs> let's go. No, no. Let's go and talk about long time no see, um, because it does go back to compromising positions. Mm -hmm. Good point. Well, we're all still oh, remembering. Sorry. No, don't be <laughs> at all. I should have probably gone there in the first place, but then I was afraid we wouldn't even get to be because actually, Shining Through of all your books still is my favorite. Yeah, I shouldn't acknowledge that. You no, probably you want to swap me. But no, no, I, I love it. But I, it just uh, for some reason, mm -hmm. you know, I, mm -hmm. it's it. Maybe it's because I would like to have been that person. Or, or hoped that in a situation. Yeah. Well, me too, you know, and, and I'll never know. I mean, because I'll never be Judah Singer. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, tell us about Judith. She's been, what, like 20 years <coughs> since compromising? Yeah, it was over 20 years, and um, I really came back to her because I'm in this group of writers called the Adams Roundtable. Right. And we meet monthly, we have dinner, um, we chat about our lives as writers. And you're and meeting we, in the hotel in New York, right? And, and we're, we're, no, we're now meeting um, in a restaurant. Oh, you and, are? Yeah, actually, in, in, in a restaurant. And, um, you know, we have the upstairs so we can, you know, carry on as, as we feel like it. And they put out a, about a biennial anthology of short stories. And they said, we'd love you to contribute. And I said, you know, not, not my not my form, never tried a short story, thanks a lot. And <clears throat> I remember Larry Black, who's sardonic for a living and sardonic in life, but a, a really good guy, yep. said, I'll oh, give it a shot, you know, if you want, if you want. And then <clears throat> Mary Higgins Clark said, you'll have fun. But she's so ebullient, you know, I thought, right, yeah, fun. Um, but I felt obliged to give it a try. And I remember driving home to Long Island and thinking, how, how am I going to do this? You had not written a short story Never up to this point? Never written a short story. No, I mean, you get a first sentence, you might as well go on, <laughs> you know, and write a novel. I mean, it's so okay. That's, um, and uh, when I got home, by the time I got home, there was Judith again. Saying, uh -huh. it's all right. Don't worry. You know, I'll, I'll. Uh, instead of trying a new form and creating a new character, how about me? 